Welcome back to Tom's Garage, guys. It has been a few weeks since I've done a video. I have been busy. I don't know if y'all seen the live stream last night. I uh, had a big announcement. I am now full-time in this shop. So, and I tell you, I have got a shop full. It's uh, March 5th, and it's in the 70s. It's been in the 70s and 80s for several weeks now, and we are slammed. So today, we are going to do a full service on that right there that is an arians icon xd uh 52 inch and this one has got the kawasaki fr 691 v very good engine very good engine and i noticed before i even started look how high that oil level is it's got twice the amount of oil it needs so what we did was we went to Stins and we got the Kawasaki engine service kit. Uh, the Kawasaki part number for this is a 99969-6543. And you can see all the engine models it will take care of. And the Stins part number for this particular one is 785654. Comes in a convenient little kit. Let's see what all we have in here, boys. Let's see what we got. What do we have? What do we have? And it comes with two quarts of the 10W40. Yeah, two quarts of that. And we have got the air filter. Look at there. That's the Stins part number for the air filter. It also comes with the outer air filter. Yeah, well, what else? What else? Here's the oil filter, uh, 120 485. Look at there. Oh, yeah, we got some more goodies in here. There's the fuel filter. Ah, uh, 120 562. That is OEM stuff right there. That ain't no Amazon crap. And it comes with NGK spark plugs. That is good. BPR 4ES. Comes with two of these. There's the other one down there on the bottom. Oh, look at there. It even comes with a maintenance due sticker on it. Well, that's pretty cool. You can stick it on this mower. I put my little Tom Doby mower repair sticker right beside it. So, we are going to go through uh, servicing this thing. It's It barely fits on my table. So, what I'm going to have to do is do the service. Then, I'll pull it off the table. I'll put the front wheels on the front of the table and raise the table. And that way, I can very very carefully crawl under it and get the blades off this thing. It has got right at 30 hours on it. And check the air pressure, grease all the fittings, sharpen the blades, oil change, air filter, fuel filter. Hi dirt, let's get to it. Ooh wee, well they are not making this easy. There's the oil drain way down there at the bottom, right on top of the frame right there and then the oil filter is right there and i tell you it's going to drain right on top of that that transmission right on top of it. this is going to make one hell of a mess down there you can see it's already it's already been leaking a little bit you can see all that nasty dirt stuck to that oil we're going to clean all that too wow i don't know if you can see that or not but hmm the oil filter has a little channel under it that'll direct the oil right on top of that transmission. God, this is gonna make a hell of a mess. Well, let's let's get to it or we can just sit here and cry about it. All right, I am going to let this thing run for just a minute. It's been sitting on this table all night and it's kind of cool out here right now. So I'm gonna let it run for just a minute and get that oil heated up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suck that oil right out of the dipstick if the oil was really, really, really black, I wouldn't do that. I would drain it and probably flush the engine, but it, it's not that dark. Uh, so I'm just gonna suck it right out of the tube and then we'll drain the uh, oil filter and get it off. So let's crank this thing and let it roll. <laughs>
let her up for another few seconds and turn it off and we're gonna, we're gonna suck it out. All right, I got y'all mounted to my chest now like little babies. Carry y'all around like a little baby. Get that little dipstick out of there. God, I can't believe how much oil is in this thing. I don't know what in the world. No okay. Here's my handy dandy little pump. I got this at Northern Tool a couple years ago. Run this down that tube and give that thing about 12 good pumps and let it do its job. When that engine oil is warm, man, I tell you, it doesn't take long to slurp it all out. This thing's probably got three quarts. In it. Look at there. There it goes. There it goes. I'm going to raise this thing up just a little bit. Raise it up just a little bit. Oh, good. Make sure it's all in there. I want to get all the way to the bottom of this tube, down in the bottom of the engine, and get it all out. Yeah, you can feel the tube is warm. All right. I'm going to give this thing a good steam cleaning, too, so I'm going to end up getting oil all over it without really caring. But I'll have to clean up my mess, I guess. Oh god, I'm gonna have to get my arms in there somehow or another and get that oil filter. Let me get this seat out of the way. I wonder how tight that fuel that oil filter is. Oh yeah, it's pretty tight. Yep, grab the wrench. I am already tired. Already tired. Oh god. Let me lower it a little bit. My arms ain't as long as they used to be. Okay, I'm just wanna, I just wanna get it to move a little bit. Now, I wonder if my little, I wonder if my little truck will work. Eh, where did it go? I think, I believe I got this idea from more Medic One. I actually drink a lot of Powerade. I cut the bottom off and left a little channel. Leave the lid on there and it'll catch all the oil that'll come out of that oil filter. Grab your flashlight. Okay, let's see. If I could squeeze this in there and somehow or another. Let's see, is that down in there far enough? It looks like it might be. Let's see, I'm gonna put it under that. Nope, still gonna make a mess. Still gonna make a mess. All right, now I don't really have room to get my hand in there. Well, let's see, let me get that thing a little looser. There we go. Squeeze it in there. All right. I believe that's gonna be good. Oh, there it goes. Nope, still gonna make a hell of a mess. It ain't gonna make near as big of a mess as it would've. Get that little filter off of there, just pick up the whole darn thing. Whew, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there we go with that. Yeah, it still made a hell of a mess. That's a poor design. It's all over the top of that transmission now. I'm gonna have to get out there and steam it real good. And there's our oil drain plug there. Uh, I don't know, let me make sure this thing is tight. Cause you can see all this, all that black gook everywhere. It tells me there's a little bitty leak somewhere. And it's probably those cheap plastic drain plugs. I just don't like them things. I got it to move a little bit. I bet it was, I bet it wasn't all the way tight. Hmm. All right, hang loose. Okay, make sure the little O-ring stayed with the oil filter, didn't stay on the engine block. Got that little oil on that new one. I like the other one. It's kind of a rough coating on it. You can grab it better. This thing is painted slick. It's hard to grab. We'll just stick it right on there like that. 
and you don't have to get it crazy tight because you'll never be able to get it off if it's overly tight. I usually write with a paint pen the date on the oil filter, but you'll never see it down here. I like to just get it just hand tight. That is plenty, plenty tight. And this is still draining. See how you pull it up? You can see it suck like air. Ooh, that is a lot of oil in that thing. So now, let me grab a. Oh, let's see. Let me raise this thing a little bit. I can get to it. I had to set that can up on top. With the can sitting down here, it wanted to pull the tube out of the dipstick tube. So I got it up there, and the gravity is holding it a little bit better. And I don't like grabbing these spark plug boots and just start yanking. I like to try to grab them. The whole thing. Give it a twist. I have pulled that connector out of one of these boots before. Boy, that sucker is on there. Make sure it's still in there. Make sure it's all the way in. This thing will go this way. Give it a twist. Oh, these things are on there. Oh, come out of there. There we go. Man, these things are so easy to damage. So easy to damage. Let's say I'm grab a spark plug wrench. It'll be that one right there. Yep, that one right there. We'll grab that and that. like it's a little, maybe a little rich huh. oh. I believe this is probably, well no it's got 30 hours on it it should have had services before And that's where it came from. Cobb County Tractor Company. I used to work there back in the early 90s. And they are no longer a John Deere dealer. And he was kind of upset about that because I'm fixing to take this back and go and get his John Deere tractor and service it too. I tried to get both of them on the trailer, but they just wouldn't quite fit. I could have got them on there, but I couldn't have got them off myself. Make sure you don't cross the end this booger right there. Find the hole. Now, when you go all the way down with a spark plug, another quarter turn, because you have to crush that sleeve right there, this little crush sleeve. A little more. There we go, right there, nice and snugly. Make sure you hear it click. There it goes. Same on this side. I bet y'all hate watching my videos when I throw tools down on this metal table. I bet that just rings your ears on it. I gotta remember to quit doing that to you guys. Especially with the camera so close to the table. And a little bit. You gotta know when to stop. There it goes. All right, let's check this oil here. Is it still slurping? It is. Let's see, while this thing is still sucking the oil, still sucking the oil, I'm gonna swap this fuel filter. This one, I don't know if I like this fuel filter. Smaller. 
That's a big automotive style filter there. I like that. Huh. We'll just have to see. Stick that right there. I don't know there ain't no fuel going to come out of this, but I want to close it off anyway. It'll probably run back out of the fuel pump all over me and all over the place. That's all right. I've already got a mess to clean up anyway. Do that. Pull that off. Give it a twist. Well, sometimes these things can be a booger. There, give it a twist. Yeah, there we go. Set this somewhere. I know it's gonna leak if I turn it up. All right, direction to flow that way. Okay. That on there. Hmm. I may not use this fuel filter. I may use a different style. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. I'm sure it'll be alright though. It's a quality filter by stands. I mean, it'll be alright. Yep. This may not be the original. 490190031. Just a. It's just a universal style filter. Pour that in there. You can see where I laid this damn thing right here down. Didn't even think about it. Changed it, I just laid it down and just went everywhere. Ain't that just genius? That's real men of genius right there. All right, I got the fuel filter done. And let me check the oil, how it's doing. I tell you what, let me go ahead and change this air filter while I'm waiting for that. I got this oil can right in my darn way. I just know I'm going to end up knocking that off too. Let's see. Raw. Oh, God. damn it. I did it. Told you I was going to do it, and I did it. Sorry, though, we got it off. This one doesn't have a pre-filter on it how many times have you guys ever tried to put your pre-filter on and rip that sucker in half i have done it before and i'm probably going to do it again come on baby get in there yeah we'll tighten her back down i should have just loosened it there and just took the whole darn tube off of it but it didn't Oh, I got dusty fingerprints all over that now. Okay, there's the air filter, spark plugs. Got the new oil filter on it. Got the fuel filter changed. Uh, let's see how the oil's doing. When this thing is empty, you'll hear it just start slurping air. Just like that. That's kind of cool because that's like a warning single signal. And don't pump this thing too many times. You can implode that can right there. I've seen it happen. Okay. All right. Let's see. The only. Oh shit! I don't. Yeah, there's a grease fitting right there. Okay. One little grease fitting right there. Turn that air compressor off, fixing to blow y'all's eardrums out again. I don't see any other grease fittings on this entire tractor besides them two front wheels. None of the spindles have bare, uh, grease fittings. These front steering spindles ain't got fittings.
Well, I know I'll just put a new tube of grease in this thing. I bet it ain't never been greased. Yep. It's coming out. But is it going in? There it goes. That was about 50 pumps of grease in one little wheel. I always wipe the end of your little grease zerk off. Yeah. Lord, these things are holding a lot of grease. And those ain't bearings, those are just little plastic bushings. I mean, y'all got to make sure y'all put grease in them. I bet I used a half a tube of grease on these two front wheels. There it goes. I'm going to stop right there and start wasting grease. Yeah, that's the only two grease fittings I see on the whole darn tractor. Oh, God. Okay, man, this thing has finally got done draining. And now I'm going to put the Earl back in it. I tell you, there had to be four quarts of oil in this engine. It was, wow. Well, that could happen. You know, I've seen crazier things. Okay, let's see. Uh, this thing ought to, we're going to find out exactly how much this thing holds. And I always end up pouring it too darn fast and it fills up the dipstick tube in the funnel and all right now quit glopping. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well even if you hold it like you're supposed to, it don't wanna pour right. Huh. I'll put one quart in there and see where it's at on the stick. Then I'll keep doing it till it's just a little bit over full, crank it, then check it. Because you need to fill up the oil filter. What's well, an exciting video, isn't it? Mm, mm. All right, let's see where we're at on this thing. Let's see how much we got. Give that just a second to settle on down. I always wait a good minute before I check it because it always sticks to the side of the tube there and it'll get on your dipstick and you'll think it's full when it's not. Yep, that's just right on the ad. So we'll go ahead and stick it to another one there. Stick another one. I didn't think one quart was going to be very much. There you go. There you go. I got a puddle of oil on the table under this thing, of course. Now I gotta clean the table again. All right, that's about a half quart. Let me check it. I am absolutely the world's worst about putting too darn much oil in something. And end up having to drain some back out. I don't like wasting oil. And we are about halfway up to the full line. I just ain't gonna put four quarts in it like the last guy did. Right, let me see where we're at now. That's about a quart and three quarters. Mm. 
And that is right on the full bar. Let me check it again to make doubly sure. I didn't give that a whole time to slather down the old tube. Yeah. That is right on the full mark. So I am going to crank this thing and let it run for just a, a 10 seconds. About 10 seconds. Give it a little chokey chokey. Just lost that lid. Okay. I didn't see that filter filling up, but it's got fuel in it. Usually you'll just see a big whoosh and it'll just, when that fuel pump kicks in, it'll just fill it up at once, but, huh, strange. Oh, let me set the camera back down. We'll check this Earl level. Now I can get the camera to stand. Stand right there. I just know that's fixing to fall. All right, give it a second to it. Let it settle at the bottom. I bet it's going to take exactly both quarts. And we are about halfway, no? Yeah, we're about three quarters of the way up to the full mark. Yeah, about three quarters of the way. Three quarters of the way. I'll go ahead and put the rest of this in there. And we are papaya. Look at there, perfect. All right, so far we have changed the oil and oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, inner and outer air filter. We have both spark plugs. I have greased the front end. Uh, next thing to do is to pull it down, get it off the table, change, uh, sharpen the blades and uh, give it a good cleaning. And by golly, that's gonna be, that's gonna be the last thing to do. All right. All right, this is the fun part here. You know, you can see the little residue. I got this thing strapped off and I got the back wheels chalked. Both of them. And I do not like crawling under these things, but sometimes you have to. Oh, let's go down. Ooh. Oh, cold concrete. Ugh. When I put the blades back on, I'm going to try to time them just like they are now. The two outer blades are even, and the one in the middle is, well, about 90 degrees off. Let's get these blades off of here. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but Ooh. I do not like getting most of my body under here. Washer, there's one blade. They're not bad. Not bad. I gotta go to the other side to get that one.
I do not like getting on the damn floor. And be careful when you're doing this. I'm out here by myself. Nobody can hear me scream. Ooh. All right. Let's get these blades sharpened. I usually do these by hand with a little hand grinder. Y'all seem to be probably doing it a hundred times. But I'm going to use my, my big grinder right here because it does seem to do a little bit better job. I'm going to get me one of those RBG blade sharpeners like, uh, like DLT Lawn Care has. I think it just does a better job and it's quicker. You know, you can take you can take more metal off these things quicker with a hand grinder. Small little thin lawnmower blades is fine for a hand grinder, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that thing right there. Let's do it. I think that's better than uh, using a hand grinder. It don't look as good because I'm trying to do it free-handed. You need the machine that holds it at a steady angle. I'm I'm doing it by hand, and you're you know you just can't get it just right. But it takes more metal off quicker than just with a hand grinder. That's that's pretty good. That's impressive. I've been grinding different stuff on this wheel. Is the reason it ain't it ain't flat, but I'm gonna keep working on this, and I'll show you guys the end results. Yeah, I had to take a lot of meat off these because they were so dull. But the, the bench grinder did pretty good taking the meat off of it. It did it pretty quick. But see, now what I'm going to do is put it back in my vise that I usually use with my hand grinder and just make it look better. Because I want them not only to be sharp, but I want them to be pretty. I'll just take a little pride in it. Oh, God. And make sure you wear your safety glasses and it wouldn't hurt to wear air protection either, man. This stuff is loud. All right, let me hit this with a hand grinder and I'll see how it turns out. That just looks 10 times better. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through all the blades and make them, now that they're sharp, I'm gonna make them pretty, so. All right, I believe they turned out pretty well. You know, these big, thick commercial blades, man, using a hand grinder, you'll be out there for an hour trying to sharpen them, trying to take enough meat off of them to make an edge, and you'll turn them blue and make them soft, getting them too hot. But on a stone wheel, like like what DLT's got, RBG781, I believe is what it is. It was on one of his videos he did recently. I saw it on his bench. Uh, those make it look good. They take a lot of meat off in a little time. They don't overheat them. You know, I know the best way to sharpen a blade has been debated on YouTube since since everybody was using abacuses before there was even a YouTube. So let's get these blades back on this thing. Let's get this thing out and get it washed. I'm getting tired. Well, all right, boys, there she is, all nice and pretty, cleaned up. Got all that nasty goo out of there. Nice and clean. That is a service on an Arians, Icon XD. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Get that sun out of your eyes there. 
I will see you on the next. I'm going to start doing more videos, guys. Like I said, I am now full time in this shop. And this shop is busy. I have got more stuff to do. More stuff to do than I can count. Guys, I will see you on the next video. Uh, Y'all be real good.